Ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you. Is Joe Biden cursed? Or did the things that occurred throughout his life, was it just a coincidence? Now, those of you that believe in the word know that curses can occur and can be placed on people. And those curses can be generational, where it passes down throughout the generation and it can go on and on and on for many years. So let's take a look at Joe Biden's history. Joe Biden went into the Senate and we know he racially hated the black community. And we saw the footage of him using the N word on the Senate floor. And he admitted when he went into the Senate, a lot of the people that he admired were the ditzy crats that he was working with at that time. And Joe Biden never did try to hide his disdain that he had for the black community. But before we go any further with that, let's talk about what happened leading up to Joe Biden being inaugurated into the Senate. Two weeks before his inauguration, Joe Biden's wife and infant daughter were killed in a car crash. They went out Christmas shopping. So it was his wife, his infant daughter, Naomi, Hunter Biden, and Bo Biden were all in the car together. Shortly after they left the house, they got into an accident. So his wife and daughter, they didn't make it. Bo Biden suffered multiple broken bones. And Hunter Biden suffered injuries and head trauma. So they had to be hospitalized. And at the time, Hunter was four and Bo was five. So when Joe Biden was inaugurated into the Senate, that was the state his family was in. Two weeks before his inauguration that happened. Ladies and gentlemen, he gets into the Senate and a big part of his record was working against the black community. It's not like he's changed. He's still doing it. But many in our community refuse to see it. Joe Biden said many, many hateful things, many racially hateful things as a senator. He didn't even want his child and a black child to be sitting together in school. Joe Biden is the one that did a crime bill that kicked off mass incarceration. And, and let me explain why a crime bill 
reparations and qualified immunity is never going to come from Joe Biden. When he did that crime bill, it really hurt our community. He knows it hurt the community. But he never tried to rescind the bill. You know why? Because then that would be an admission that he was wrong. And if he's not going to admit he's wrong, he's never going to give our community any protection like he did the Asian community. See, with the Asian community, he never worked against them in the Senate. He didn't come out with a crime bill to harm them. It was easy to do something for them. But for us, it's a lot more complicated. That crime bill was very harmful. One thing that has consistently happened to us all throughout history is keeping our families separated. Separation during chattel slavery it was a means of selling our families off to many different people and they never seen each other again. But now mass incarceration is the tool to keep separation in our families. Gender wars are used to keep separation in the family. So it's still being done, but it's been repackaged to impact us in different ways, but the goal is separation. And that's what Joe Biden's bill has done to us. If you can't get this man to right his wrong, he's never going to give us any bill to protect us from that very law that he put in place. He's not going to give us that crime bill, y'all. He's not. This man, like many, is full of pride and accountability. They just don't do well with accountability at all. He would rather die and go to his grave than admit he was wrong about that crime bill he put out. Giving reparations, that's an admission to a wrong. They're not good with accountability. They're not good at fixing a wrong. Qualified immunity, he already said he's never going to get rid of qualified immunity. And just like Trump, that's one thing Joe Biden and Donald Trump parallel each other on policing. Joe Biden feels just like Donald Trump. There should be more police. And he does not believe in defunding the police. He doesn't believe in doing away with qualified immunity. So let's move on to crack cocaine. And we know how bad it impacted the community, the black community. And ladies and gentlemen, you know it's a sabotaging by the way it was done. You know, all the drugs out here, they can be found in every community. You know, cocaine is in every community. Marijuana is in every community. You got um, heroin. Opioids all can be found in every single community, right? But when it came down to crack cocaine, it exclusively was dropped 
in the black community. And it was the black community that was the most devastated by it. And there were eyewitnesses to people saying that it was folks that didn't look like the community coming in and dropping stuff off. There were eyewitnesses. So it was clearly a sabotaging, one of many, but it didn't fully work. And now we're looking at the times of the opioid fentanyl addiction that has long surpassed the crack epidemic. Long surpassed. And they're now admitting there is no end in sight for opioids, fentanyl, and heroin addiction. There's no ending in sight. That is a curse. That is a curse. So let's move forward. Bo Biden was in the military and he also became the attorney general in Delaware. In 2013, Bo Biden died of a brain tumor. So that's a lot of people Joe Biden has lost in his own family. And then we got Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden is addicted to the very drug that they tried to sabotage the black community with, crack cocaine. His father put out a crime bill that started mass incarceration in the black community. And his son is addicted to the drug they use to sabotage us with. Is that a curse or is that a coincidence? Ladies and gentlemen, more information has come out about Hunter Biden. Now, one thing, they're saying that Joe Biden is an enabler when it comes down to Hunter Biden. And I actually agree with that. Now, we saw about a year ago pictures of Hunter Biden speeding, took pictures of his odometer speeding, and he took pictures of himself holding a crack pipe in his vehicle. Well, not long ago, they got Hunter Biden's iPhone, ladies and gentlemen. And there's all kinds of pictures that they're reporting of illegal drugs that he took pictures of. More than likely drugs he bought. Hunter is real good at incriminating himself. But being that he's the president's son and a senator's son, he doesn't get persecuted by the law like anyone else would if they had those same drugs. So on this iPhone, they said there's multiple pictures of illegal drugs and pictures of Hunter Biden with these illegal drugs. This was from his iPhone that they retrieved. How many times have Joe Biden got in front of, because I've seen this, got in front of the camera and said that Hunter don't do drugs anymore. He's recovered. He's been through rehabilitation. He's trying to be better. Ladies and gentlemen, none of that is true. 
Mm -mm. It, it's just too many incidents of illegal drugs and, you know, and there's also talk of human trafficking that Hunter Biden was involved in. And you saw the hot tub pictures and he's always getting prostitutes and everything. You know, that's why we all say if Hunter was a black man, he would be in jail. But being that he is Joe Biden's son, he is never going to jail, y'all. You can best believe it. Even when Joe Biden is out of office and they still catch Hunter in the act, Hunter is not going to jail. He's not. That's how this society works. It's punishment for one and none for others. It is so badly rigged up in here, it's not even funny. But even with dealing with Hunter, is that a curse or a coincidence? You'll have to let me know. Be sure to come back each and every day to check for my newest episodes on my podcast, Unapologetic Thoughts. Peace, family.